So um, ensuring a workforce at the ready continues to be a great concern, especially when unemployment ex uh, insurance extensions and enhancements creep up on the hourly rate for so many positions. Speaking to these issues will be Bob Lipka, who is the vice president of New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program, Peter Connolly of Shock Tech, and chair of the NJMEP board, and Roy Fazio will wrap it up, uh, the owner of Protocol Group. Bob, I'll turn it over to you now. Uh, thank you for everybody for their time and the contributions. It's been interesting and gained the perspective today from all the different segments of the state and the businesses. Uh, I, I'm with the New Jersey Manufacturing Ex Extension Program, NJMEP. Um, I lead the Workforce Development uh, Solution Services Group and Initiatives. We've been around for 25 plus years and uh, are the leading support organization and advocate for manufacturing in New Jersey. There's one of us in every state, but we are the, we are the New Jersey people for, for manufacturing. Uh, we offer a range of things that we do to help manufacturers to improving their operations for growth and for workforce development. And we're finding in today's, today's world, workforce development is becoming one of the most important things that we do. We focus on uh, the viability, sustainability, and growth of the manufacturing industry. And uh, what, what we've seen is um, in the, on the workforce um, side, is there's over 2 million jobs wanting manufacturing nationwide. And that translates to tens of thousands of jobs in New Jersey. And many of these positions lead to high paid positions uh, that embrace advanced technology. There's over 11,500 manufacturers of various sizes across the state. And over the years, we've touched and worked with uh, probably approximately 7,000, and we have a lot of work to do to help as many as we can. And what one of the biggest issues today, for, for not only for growth of uh, the manufacturing industry, but is uh, the survival is a work, finding workers and, and having, having the qualified workers that they need. So we focus very heavily on building a worker pipeline. And to do that, we rely on a lot of state funding uh, for grants and other programs and initi initiatives to launch and sustain programs that help achieve this. Uh, just give you some quick examples. Uh, we have our ga GAINS grant, which uh, funds the uh, launching of apprenticeships for the manufacturing and logistics uh, industries. Uh, we have our PACE grant, which is a pre-apprenticeship grant, which draws in high school students and student populations across the, uh, across the state. And our latest initiative is what we call Project 160, which is a combination of state and federal funding, where we're looking to work across the state in the greater urban areas of Newark, Patterson, Camden, and Trenton to source and qualify, train, and, and give the best shot at getting jobs for people from uh, the unemployed demographics, displaced people, veterans, and, and other demographics to draw people, new people into manufacturing and providing qualified candidates to, to the manufacturing industry. So our goal is in each of those areas to, to get 40 people qualified as certified production, what we call certified production technicians. And uh, so covering those four areas, that's 160 um, uh, people uh, across the state. It's a heavy lift and we've been working on it for the last few months and we're starting to get some headway now. But again, all this depends on a lot of government funding to, to sustain it. Uh, our programs foster collaboration between employers, educational institutions, nonprofits and government. And this, uh, this is uh, crucial. These partnerships are crucial to our success and what we try to do for the manufacturing inter industry. We're a central catalyst for uh, crafting solutions for manufacturing and distribution se sectors. Um, and uh, the key investment, uh, investment is key by all partners, but especially by government. And uh, that uh, while they've been supportive, their, their, the consistency of funding has, has been a challenge to not only launch the programs, but to uh, sustain them. Um, Along with the funding that uh, the state provides are customized training grants. And this is, this is critical, especially in manufacturing across the state, the average manufacturing company is 50 or less employees. So fu the funding becomes critical, especially for those companies because the, the smaller and medium sized companies don't necessarily have the funding that they need to train, uh, to, to attract the, the new workers as well as train their existing workforce. And again, it's not just crucial to their growth, but to today to their survival. And recent funding uh, over the last couple of fiscal, fiscal years has hovered around $3 million. I know when I first got into workforce development, there was a fund of 25 
to uh, 30 million dollars, which which was a big big help uh, in in funding and and uh, helping companies. So that has dwindled. So that shortfall has had a great impact. So we can't we can't stress enough how important the funding is to sustain industries and the investment by the state. And what I've heard this morning. Uh, in, in, our, in our business community, especially the small business community, which sustains the economy and is vital to the future of the economy. It's, it's, just, it's just absolutely crucial. The state needs to do as much as we can. And, and again, it's not only the funding, but the consistency of funding so we don't lose the, the momentum we establish. So uh, that's our mission and that's what we're trying to do. And I hope we can contribute to everybody's efforts to, to uh, to survive this uh, this trying and challenging time. Uh, I'd like to turn it over now to Peter Conley of uh, Shock Tech. Peter? How about Peter, we'll come back to you. We're gonna hop to Roy and we'll try you again in a minute. Okay, apologies that we can't get you off of mute at the moment. Roy, are you available? Yes, good morning, thank you. Good morning, Roy. I'm representing the, uh, the staffing and recruiting industry and weekly, in New Jersey, there are over 141,000 temporary employees that uh, work is with average annual earnings of $38,600. A lot of people do not uh, know that much about the staffing industry. Protocol Group, my company, uh, has been in the staffing and recruiting for over 50 years. Uh, we are the employer of record and provide over 7,000 workers annually uh, with work to our to employers in uh, South Jersey area and the Philadelphia market. It's never been this difficult to get people to accept job positions and get and have a ready workforce. And there are really uh, two issues for our industry that I like to really talk about. You know, one is the unemployment incentive. You know, first we had the federal incentive of paying people $600 a week. And now we have the new uh, New Jersey state incentive that will pay uh, people $300 a, a week on un to, to stay on unemployment. The other uh, piece I'd like to present is workforce development. Uh, and it really is around healthcare workers, uh, preparing them to work in physician offices and to work in environmental services areas and hospitals. Uh, for those who don't know, the staffing industry is really a bridge for many workers to move from temporary positions to full-time positions. It gives them an opportunity to really uh, work in a, in a company and, and see if they really like working in a company. And if they do a great job, they get an opportunity to be offered a full-time uh, job by, by our customers. Uh, during this COVID-19 crisis, we helped so many essential food distribution employers and healthcare employers. Um, at Protocol Group, we really moved pretty quickly to get our internal uh, recruiters set up to work at home with computers and work compliancy technology so that they were able to interview on the phone and, and, and place employees at the hospitals and, and the healthcare organizations and food distribution uh, companies. Um, they depended on us to recruit and place candidates to, and also to assure a, a safe, we were able to help and assure a safe work environment uh, for our workers and for our customer companies. We were able to do, uh, provide uh, temperature testing uh, devices and provide medical, certified medical assistance to stand at the, at the entrances to our food distribution uh, warehouses and test employees before they came in every day to see if they were safe. Right now at Protocol, we have over 500 job openings that we can fill. Candidates are not willing to take jobs, do not have the needed training in some cases. So there are two ways that our industry get help from our, our state. So we can continue to help employers in both essential and non-essential areas. Number one, the $300 unemployment money. This is a disincentive for candidates, employees to want to work. Uh, they make more money sometimes and stay at home. Of course, there's another issue too, because um, those that are in office jobs have, have situations where they have kids working at home uh, and it's tough for them to really get into offices and be safe. The state monies, uh, I do have a recommendation that the state monies could better be used by creating a grant of giving the money to employers 
and employers to pay to workers an incentive of $2 to $3 more per hour to take jobs. Uh, this can be, be better controlled by employers rather than um, uh, uh, and arbitrarily giving it to employees on unemployment. Pennsylvania has done something like this through a grant, so I know it can be done and it may be a very innovative way to do it. Uh, the second piece I want to talk about is workforce development. You know, one of the things is there's so many needs for certified medical assistants. Those are the people that, you know, work in physician offices that, that uh, help uh, weigh patients when they come in and do the uh, take temperatures and, and get the doctor set up to, to see the patient. Uh, the challenge is that students come out of schools, they pay $150 to take the state certified testing, but they're not readily employable because um, uh, even though they pass the test because they have never gone through an internship to work in a physician office. And physicians don't really have the time and resources really to bring in new employees and not have them never work in a physician group, be able to work with patients. Some schools um, uh, do provide some internships, but I think if the state were to create a program of internships, I think it would be in extremely valuable. The other piece is um, for workforce development, and I don't know if the state has considered this, there's a lot of need for environmental service workers in hospitals where they clean up the hospitals and sanitize them. Uh, the challenge is that um, it's just difficult really to take somebody that hasn't had any hospitality training and bring them into a hospital. Uh, a really neat program would be to have a, uh, um, a prep program uh, for workers on hospitality. In Pennsylvania, once again, they have a program called Occupational Industrialization Centers, where they provide grant monies for free hospitality training for people getting them ready for work. And in this case, hospitals can readily employ them. Uh, so that's kind of all I have to say. I thought I could give two different uh, recommendations that would really help our industry and help uh, people get out to work. But the biggest one is the disincentive, but it's just, we've got all these job openings. We have jobs ready for employees, but uh, people say that I'm getting more un unemployment. So why should I go back to work? It is a challenge, Roy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Peter, clean up. We're going to take one more shot. Can we get you off of mute? I am, I am so sorry uh, that we're having an audio issue with you this morning. Uh, extreme apologies. And if you want to uh, drop a few points into the chat box, perhaps, Peter, um, Hopefully, maybe we can uh, get your information added in another way. I'm so sorry. Um, at, at this point, I do want to um, give some of our uh, legislators who joined us the uh, brief opportunity for a few words. I know Assemblywoman Chaparro, you, you wanted to offer something. Would you like to kick it off? Yes, thank you so much. First of all, I want to say thank you for having this. This is, was wonderful. I was taking notes. Um, I, I registered like at the last minute, and I'm glad that I did. Um, 2020, I mean, we know it's been challenging for many people and I could, and I'm only going to speak for myself. Um, I first want to apologize because I think as a legislator, we, um, we tend to speak to our surrounding environment and we, um, just hear what's going on locally, which is important, but we have to also look, expand to other, um, districts and, um, I, I have to tell you that everything that I'm listening to, there's one little phrase that comes to mind for me, and it's it's connecting the dots. There are so many, um, there's someone that mentioned about local, um, letting local um, municipalities take over. I work for the local municipality here, so I totally understand what they're saying. Um, we There is not one size fits all, and this year has weighed heavily on my shoulders because there's so many stories um, and I, I really want to help. I really don't want to, um, you know, make a decision and put something in motion that's actually hurting people or their consequences that are going to be bigger coming forward. We have to walk a mile in, in other people's shoes to understand. So that's why this meeting was so important to me, because I'm hearing from business owners that, let's face it, without these small businesses, New Jersey wouldn't be New Jersey. My hometown of Hoboken all the small businesses, people come here because of the businesses. I've worked for small businesses without them growing up. I mean, I was a single mom. They, they were like my family. 
So there is not one size fits all. We do know that there are some people out there that are not going to do the right thing, but not everybody should suffer for that. So I re- what I'm saying right now is that I need to extend um, my office. I know there was a couple of people that said that they've reached out to legislators that didn't reach out to them. And I'm sure that's in another district um, closer to them. But I welcome anybody from South Jersey, further up North Jersey to call me because I really and truly want to work together and come up with legislation that's going to really um, help businesses because we need you. One thing I want to point out that, I, that I'm going to make that drastic um, assumption out there is just that with small businesses, that actually helps people mentally. We talk about people being stressed, depressed, um, you know, anxiety. They need to get out. And we all know that we don't have enough doctors that are going to take calls for people that need to really um, talk about their depression, their anxiety, and they need hope. We need hope. We need to see businesses open up and we can't make it harder. And that also means locally because state can make all these rules and regulations, but we also need to know that locally we need to work with them and let them take the burden because the state is at capacity. We see agencies that are not working um, at, at their capacity. They're not doing the things or need more help. So things are crumbling and we need to somehow bring it together. It's like a Band-Aid we're putting on and that Band-Aid is not going to last. So I welcome anybody. I really, I would call it a workshop, whatever you want. I want to really be front and center with you guys because you know it better than I do. And I don't want to make a decision um, based on what I'm hearing or, or, or one-sided report. And, and this was very important to me because this, I mean, how do you guys, how do you guys manage? I don't even, I didn't even have an answer. How do you manage to pay your rent, pay your employees, pay their health benefits, stock up and then open doors and you could only have a few people in. So I get that. I get the frustration. I get the pain, but we need to help you. And I want to just extend myself and I need to have everyday conversations. This can't just be once a month, right? Cause then it won't work. So I want to make myself available and Thanks, um, you know, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. I know we had again, numerous legislators on, if anyone else is on who would briefly, we're running out of time, like to make a comment or two uh, before we wrap. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd like to make a quick comment, Michelle. Please. Yeah, I just want to say to everybody before you wrap up, you know, you guys, as you mentioned, are the lifeblood of our economy and everything that you do every day is just so appreciated. And, and quite often as a legislator and legislature and an executive branch of government, all we do is get in your way and it sucks. And I apologize for that. And I'm here to help in any way I possibly can. So reach out to me. I put my cell in the comments and I'd be glad to hear from any of you and we'll do anything I can possibly do to support any of you. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. We appreciate that. Any others? Yes, I'd like to, it's Assemblyman Eric Simonson from Legislative District 1. Uh, just want to echo those sentiments from our other council people. Um, our legislative office, I share an office with Senator Testa and also Assemblyman Antoine McClellan. So uh, I posted our office number. I'll put my cell in the comments as well. Uh, we work diligently with the local businesses down here because it's, it's the backbone of our economy, especially down in the far south, the, the tip of New Jersey. And um, we, but we would be willing to help out in any district. And uh, again, thanks for having this meeting. Um, I'll be on here anytime that, that I can and uh, even more frequently would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it, Assemblyman. Um, in wrapping up, I want to thank um, and express my sincere thanks to all our speakers today. Um, your stories are powerful. You shared a uh, need for resources, need for access. Um, you've asked uh, our, our policymakers to do some things and you've also asked our policymakers to not do some things. And those not do's are uh, no new regs or legislation or mandates that will continue to put further burden um, on what we heard today is already a beleaguered uh, business and nonprofit community. Uh, we also heard you ask for liability protection, which is so significantly important. Not only did you all talk today about how you're meeting the standards in your businesses to keep your workforce, your clients, your supply chain, anyone who frequents your facilities safe, but you go above and beyond. And we hear that in your passion today. And we know that you will continue to do that as we continue to advocate for increased capacity. And along with that, when you check those boxes, we have to give you the protections you need. And we have to continue to build consumer confidence. And so having those safeguards in place not only protects, 
but builds uh, confidence as well. And I want everyone to know on behalf of the New Jersey Business Coalition and all the partners who are here today, we advocate uh, a regional approach to the continuation of how we transact business and open up our economy in a COVID world. Please visit njbia.org slash recovery. Uh, on that page is the recovery framework from the coalition. The coalition is comprised of over 100 businesses and nonprofits from all across the state who've been working tirelessly to advocate and push issues to help you or to keep back policies that will hurt you since the beginning of COVID. Uh, with that, I wanna thank all our legislators again Again, I want to thank the media who joined us. Everyone here today will be receiving a copy of the recording uh, and we'll be sharing it on social media. When you see the social media, please tag, join, and let's keep this momentum going. This was a dynamic discussion that cannot end now. We must keep this up. So everyone continue to be safe and have a safe and wonderful day. Thank you so much.